right, before we go too far, let's make sure this thing actually fires up. There's no sense in tearing apart something that's a dead doornail. There we go. So, John's going to tear this thing apart today. We're going all the way down to the block. And this is one I've been looking for for a while. This is a one owner engine. The generator side died. This has never ever been torn open or molested or anything. As you can see, the back side of this, there's the generator tapered shaft. And eventually, we're going to see if we can do a conversion. There's a lot of different ways you can potentially convert these. And we're ripping the entire engine down, pulling the crank, and we're going to see if we can manage to weld the sleeve on and cut a keyway or cut the keyway, weld the sleeve. You get the idea. But the other big thing about these is that everybody always claims that the Duramax 440 is supposedly a lie and that there's no reason that they claim that it's 18 horsepower and everything else. So you know what? We're going to tear apart the 340 and we're going to compare it to the Duramax and note what the differences are. We already know there's two differences straight off the bat. The first difference that is easily found when you start doing anything with these is the exhaust port on these is bigger and the flange is slightly bigger. The other thing we know through paperwork is that the piston size in this is bigger than the GX340 or the GX390. But as it is, we won't know anything else until John tears every, everything apart. Because John's good at breaking things. We're just going to do it a little less broken on this one. Okay. Okay. All right, so what size was the exhaust? 12. 12 millimeter? Mm -hmm. All right, something on there extra. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is. There's a heat shield holder. I bet that's a 10 millimeter, John. There we go. Yep, go ahead and set that on the shelf down here. Oh, this by the way, a bunch of people when I posted up this welding table, see, you can see it's a welding table. Everybody was like, oh, that's well and good, except for the problem is it's only good as a welding table at like 120 bucks. I'm sorry, but for $10, you can buy an oil catch at AutoZone or whatever. And it fits almost perfectly on it. It overhangs the backside by just a little bit. And then when I need my welding table, I just take the oil catch thing off. All right, what's and, next? And, and also it cleans the table. And it cleans the table off easy. Yeah, you just pick this up and you dump it outside and then you come back. Uh, All right, what's next? I don't know. All right, let's do the carburetor. That's probably going to be 10 millimeters would be my bet since you've got that on the gun already. Yep. Okay. No, 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 you got it. You want to move this before you do these because mm -hmm. otherwise when you try to move this, the whole carb and everything moves with it. Okay. What do you do? Does it have an extra one underneath here? Some of them do. Yep, it's got a, it's got a hidden one under here. A lot of the clones don't seem to have this one for some reason. The Hondas do. Why is it being... There it goes. Yep, you just needed to get more brutal about it. Alright, you got your needle nose pliers. What you're going to do is you're going to pull the whole carburetor a little bit. And then you're going to loop out the spring. Mm -hmm. Then continue pulling the carburetor out. And eventually this rod is going to lift straight up. Bit. Yeah. Yep, that's why you need the pliers, which you lost in the last five milliseconds. <laughs> and then you dropped. Now they're all dull and they'll never work again. Okay. Like no, no. You want to clip into the top section and then roll it up and out. Okay. 
There you okay. go. Okay. So now, as the carburetor comes off and this turns, mm -hmm. eventually this rod lines up with that and it pops out. Okay. Yep. So, yep. Keep going. It should line up eventually. Which, for some reason, it's not doing it. So, who broke the system? I wonder if it's because we're dealing with a generator. All right, somebody in the comment section, tell me if I, tell me if it's because we're dealing with a generator this method is not working, because I know it should. Let's push it in. Yeah, I'm wondering if... So on a generator, this is a little bit different, and I'm betting that's why it's not lining up and just popping out like it's supposed to. Okay, push... I'm going to hold the throttle, and you push it back and see if you can lift it up. There you go. Okay, now the whole carb should slide right off of there. There we go. With a tube. Yep, with a tube. Alright, so now we've got our thermal spacer in here. And if we lift up on the spark plug wiring, we should be able to get the thermal spacer to break free from the block. And a lot of people don't realize that there is usually a gasket behind these thermal spacers. And Kohler does it too. Okay, you need to grab a you need to grab a uh, screwdriver and pry behind there. Okay. There we go. That popped free. So yeah, there's a gasket there that's gonna be a pain in the neck to remove later. So this is your thermal thing. And when you pay your $20 or whatever for the one to run a pump, all it is is just they cut this nub off, they drill it out, and they put in a piece of quarter inch or 3 16 brake line with a little bit of a flare on it. You can make one yourself at home pretty much for nothing. You just epoxy in a piece of brake line coming out right about in there after you cut that one off. All right, so what, si what size was the outside shroud? Uh, 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter? Okay, so everything for the starter is this direction, and where this is all corroded up and everything, I'd rather not tear the entire electrical system apart. I'd rather pull it as one unit. I've never tried to do that, so that's what we're going to try on this one. But John's going to pull the rest of those, and then we'll go from there. Are you done yet? All right, so that should pull straight off. And then we'll be able to see the flywheel, the coil, and the starter. There we go. So, yep, that's your pull start. And your pull start binds in with this. So when you pull your pull start, these teeth come out. Can you get it to do it? Yep, see the tabs? So those tabs lock in with this, and then when you let off, it retracts the tabs. And that's the reason why it doesn't just spin up the pull start and rip your arm off. Because nobody likes their arm ripped off, right? No. Okay. So let's get the coil off next. That way we don't accidentally screw it up. So you're going to pull the spark plug, and then you're going to pop those off. And there should be a kill wire right here that you got to pull off also. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got the spark plug boot off. Now I can tell that this is original genuine Honda because it's got this tabby little thing here. And most of the copies don't usually have the tabby thing. And that means that the kill wire is actually run into that little tab on the back side and you got to pull it out of the tab and then pull your kill wire. So go ahead, John, see if you can figure that out. Okay. So this is your kill wire running down through. You've got to get it out of the little tabby thing behind there. There it goes. All right, now you should be able to get the kill wire off. 
So go back and forth like this. No, 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 not, not like this. That's how you break them off, like this. Okay, you get that thing off there yet? Okay. How the heck do you get these off? Wait, no, yeah. <clears throat> okay, let me see. Okay, so... Let me see if I can do it. This is probably one of the worst pairs of needle nose pliers you could grab in the whole thing. There we go. Okay, so now you need to get that one and that one out, and the coils should fall off after that. And what size are those? Tens. Ten millimeter? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Alright, so what size was the electrical box bolt? 10. 10 millimeter. Alright, so what we're getting into here is the electrical start in everything. This wire here, this is your charging wire coming from underneath the flywheel. This wire here is your kill wire that's going up and over to the coil that we removed. Now, John's going to see if he can manage to get this disconnected. There should be a butt connector here that you just pull apart. No, no, you're not slicing it. Put the pliers away. Okay. She whiz. <laughs> Don't choose violence. Okay. Pull that apart. It was on that day that my son chose violence. You're supposed to show them how to do it the right way, not just slice everything apart like one of those method redneck things that we used to go pick up. Why, chicken? Chicken, go away. I do not need poop in my work area. Go, 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 go. Yeah, you, go away. Okay. So, no, 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 that's fine. That's so this right is the butt connector that goes there. Now we need to figure out, I think it's actually buried inside of there is the butt connector that goes to this. Yeah, it's right there. So you probably should grab some needle nose pliers. Oh. Needle nose, quit choosing violence of cutting everything. Holy cow. Okay. So, right there where that little nub is, reach in and pull that nub out. Out of the butt connector that's in there. Yeah, no, you had it. No, no, not all the way down. You're going to crimp the butt connector on permanently. You pull the bottom of it. Yep, straight out. If you break it, I make you fix it. That's how this works. How do we fix it? There you go. Okay. Um, in the future, try not to right angle the poor thing. Okay. So, at this point, everything should be directly to the starter so that we can undo that bolt and that bolt. So, John's going to figure out what those are. Well, it says a 10 on it, so I guess a 10. No, 10 is probably the grade of the bolt. And I'm going to verify... Oh, no, we got one more we got to undo. There's the oil, the oil switch here has to be undone, John. Okay, on that one you can choose violence. I'm okay with that. So make sure you get the right one. This one here, right there. There? Yep. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, cut it. What are you doing? You have got to eat your Wheaties, man. Cut that thing. You realize you you decided to try and cut through the anti-cut sheathing instead of the wire? 
Come down here to where the wire is. Right there. Now go right through it. We don't need the oil sensor. If we were doing this, yeah, see how nice and easy it cuts when you don't try to cut the anti-cut? All right, so at this point, everything should be all nice and loose other than those. Okay. John quote of the day. It's not cool that they put a 10 on it if it's not actually a 10 for size. Anybody want to put a comment down below as to what it is so that John understands why there's a 10 there? I'll read it off to him as, as he goes to bed tonight. Okay. So what size is it? I, I'm pretty sure that some parent told you it was a 12, so what'd you do with the 12? I never said it was a 12. I'm pretty sure I said it was a 12. Although, knowing my luck, it'll be a 13, just so I'm wrong. There we go. What size is it? 12. A 12. Oh, there. Yeah, imagine that. There's a chance that Uga might not be strong enough, because that's an inch-pound Uga. Okay, so we've got our skew of Ugas here. We've got inch pound, we've got about 150 pound, we've got about 200 pounds. So let's just plain go for make the stupid thing move. Oh, I've gotten questions about this. These Kaimos, I highly recommend. This was a banggood.com thing, and I mean, it works, but I like the Kaimo better. All right, go ahead, take that out of there. Oh, sorry for the shaky video. Go for it. Oh yeah, much better. Yep. Okay, do the other one. Now stuck. Now stuck? What'd you do, get it seized in there? What are you, oh, it's underneath the flywheel. Oh, that's a cute trick. Good job. Okay, what size was this? 12 millimeter? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to leave it. Go ahead and pull the extension out. Okay, so we're going to come over here. We're going to find the other 12 millimeter. And do the other bolt. And then the whole thing will slide so that you can get it out from under the flywheel. Because this should slide this way once you undo that one. So I'll hold this. There it goes. Okay, so now can you get the 12 out of there? Yes. Aha. And all of the electrical gooblygook gook is now gone. I'm gonna have a whole table of Honda by the time we're done. All right. Oh, this is magnetic. Yes, that's the flywheel magnet, which interacts with the coil in order to give you spark. So when the magnet goes flying past the coil, it causes the spark. But if you have this grounded out, then the magnet going past the coil can't make it spark and the engine dies. Huh. Cute new trick, compliments of using this transmission stand. Now... I can dial this up and grab a sliced off cat litter container and John can come over here with what was it 12 millimeter Yep. and crank that off there we go and the oil drains out all right so that didn't work perfectly but I'll take it. Here we go, John. So this is a 23 millimeter deep socket. You're going to take it off. Then you're going to take this junk off. You're going to thread the nut on. I'm going to pry it from right here. And with the nut level with the thread, you're going to give it a wallop with the hammer. In the middle? Yep, so let's see if we can make this happen. Okay, now thread the nut on so that the end of it is level with the end of the thread. Yep. 
Okay, so now rotate it about 180 so that it comes out just beyond it. And you're gonna take a pry bar and you're gonna hold in right here where the solid part of the webbing is. And you give that a wallop and the flywheel should pop. Okay. Yep, do it again. No, you gotta hit the <laughs> I'm trying. No, you need to be you need to be rugged about it. I'm trying to break it thing. Okay. You're you're scared of it. Let me try. I'm not good with aiming. It's with okay. It. On a, unfortunately this transmission stand idea is great for everything but this flywheel thing. Oh, oh, right in the oil. That's good. Yep. Let's try this again from a different angle. This one just does not want to come off. I can see that it's moving. It's just not being pleasant about it. But like we said earlier, this is an original, never been messed with engine. There it goes. Okay, go ahead and pull that. And when you pull it off, always check to make sure that none of the magnets get knocked loose from messing with it. Onto it. If it hits the ground, you can you can mess up the flywheel. There you go. No, nope. show these guys. So you want to check and make sure these magnets are in good condition. They didn't get knocked loose and they didn't get messed up. These ones look fine. Okay, go put that on the floor. Whatever you do, do not drop it on those teeth. Oh, there's nothing. There we go. And... That looks very nice and clean. So this engine was definitely well taken care of. So, John, now we're going to have you pull these. So you got to take the lock nut off first. Then you take this one out. And then pull the whole assembly. Yep, so it's not going because you've got it locked down in. So you've got to find what wrench fits on this and then undo that one. But I figured I'd let you learn first. I'm going to bet probably a 13 would be my bet. What was that one? Uh, a lot of small engines are usually 13s. Nope, not a 13. Okay. How about a 14 then? Yep, 14. Okay, I'll hold this and you hit the end with an Oga. Yeah. And you've got it in reverse, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, there. That one came loose. Yep. So, okay, so pull the rocker off and grab the rod underneath. Yep, the rod. Pull that back up through. There you go. Okay, so set all of those together in their own slot. That way they're sorted and we don't have to figure out who's who. No, no, that, that's its own thing. Okay, so, okay. So... In professional-ish building, you want all of the parts that came out of one side of the valve train all together. Because then that way, if there's wear and tear and stuff, you do the whole side at once. Or you can diagnose what's going on. So, let's get the other side off.
This is your intake side. So this is where your carburetor sits. So this is your intake valve. This is your exhaust valve and it has a little itty bitty lash cap in here. Right there. So John, you need to make sure that lash cap goes with the side you took off the exhaust. You sure that's the exhaust side? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, so you got your push rods out and this gasket now can come off. We've got brand new ones to go on there. And at this point, we're going to see if we can pop the head off. So you've got one, two, three, four. And we're going to see if the head will come off. That is not... You've got the wrong size socket or something, John. Yeah, because you just rounded that right onto there. <laughs> Great. I don't think it was a 15, John. I think it was a 14, like I warned you earlier. It was not moving when I put it on. Yeah, it's okay. Well, okay, so grab me an extension. Okay. So if you end up rolling one like this, you just grab an extension and go back and forth a couple of times. And there it goes. Yeah, John, I, I don't think you got the right one. We'll, we'll try again. Yes, this one is rounded. We had a slight learning experience that, you know, you got to check how tight they are. I so, yeah, yeah, apparently the tightness between a 15 and a 14 is not something a 10 year old knows. So now that we've got the correct 14 on there, let's see if it comes off better. Backwards. Hey, look at that. If you get the right size, it works. Yeah, okay. Get the rest of them. Now, the comment section is going to get filled with people being hateful that you did the top ones first. And here's the reason, okay? I'm just going to pass it on because the comment section is a bunch of mean people, okay? If you do the bottom ones first, then the head hangs off of these. And if it comes loose, then it just kind of clocks on these. If you do the top ones first, the head tries to walk back on stuff and it does dumb things sometimes. But this thing is so old that I guarantee it's going to be burnt right on and it's not going to move. So let's see if I'm right. Go ahead, pull the other two. Is there have you told me this next time? Nope. <laughs> you gotta learn. I was just learning. All right, so you got your rubber mallet. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna do is put one hand underneath mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of argument as to where you should hit this thing to knock it loose. I always go right here as flat of a hit as you can. Yep, it's going. I can see it moving. Yep, so you should be able to pull it off now if it came loose. You can see it's breaking open right there. Yep, go ahead. I thought you said it was loose. I asked if I could. Yep, There we go. See, I told you that gasket was going to be all carboned on. So yeah, it's a nice premium gasket that's in there. Unfortunately, not reusable, but beautiful. All right, so that's got a second dowel. Interesting, the dowel is stuck. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so we'll bring this dowel over here. And we'll put the dowel... Let's see, now i got to figure out which one the dowel goes in. It Is it this one? No, there it goes. One. Well, Internet. I was under the impression this was a unopened engine. But that is oblong. Is that a Honda thing to do? 
Because if you pull this off, you can see that it's been in there long enough to build up carbon. Hmm. Maybe I was wrong about whether somebody has or has not been into this engine. But we'll continue. Now we're going to try and do the side cover, which should be seven bolts all the way around. Should be one, two, three, four, five, six. I lost track of one. Why am I only at six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. I'm glad you can count. Okay, take seven out. And they're 12 millimeter, that's right. Okay, now do the other side. And as it moves, you should be able to see it open right here. There we go. Yeah, you got the bottom to open up. Okay, come over here and bop this one one more. Yep, go ahead. There you go. I heard it make a hollow sound. Yep, so that came loose. Okay, so now you should be able to shimmy it back and forth and get it to slide out. Yeah, this is the one issue with this transmission jack idea is that it's a little bit looser than having it solid mounted. Hi right, guys, I'm going to put you down and help John get it started, and then we'll show you what we're talking about about the cam gear. This side cover gasket definitely is old. You can actually see where it's binding up on John, so it's binding up there, and then it's binding up here where the gasket is half going this way and half going that way. So what I'm going to have John do is where the bolt hole sections are, is you just put a flathead in and just rotate it where the bolt hole is, going around the case. And then that way, if you manage to mess up the aluminum that's machined face, you mess it up where the bolt hole is and not on the actual sealing surface. All right, John, go ahead. So put it in there. And twist. Now twist it. Yep. Now go around and do the same thing wherever other bolt holes are. Yep, there it goes. It moved. Yep, just keep going around. There, that moved. Do a lower one. You got the top going really good. See if you can do a lower one. Oh yeah, that definitely shifted. This gasket is for some reason binding halfway on one side and halfway on the other. Okay. You can see the cam gear. Okay, so right down in there, you're going to see it glistening, should be the cam gear. And you don't want to drop that out the side of it onto concrete. So, yep, keep going back and forth with the case and take it off. There you go. So is the cam gear staying? Nope. No, it's coming with it? Yep. Okay, see if you can take your, see if you can take your screwdriver and wedge it back in go ahead and pry on it just a little see if it'll go in yep there it goes i can see it moving there you go okay so now go ahead and shift this a little bit more there we go on the gears. this is the governor gear this is going to come out with it you're doing that perfectly fine. And then you've got a balance shaft right here, which I'm going to put my finger on because these always fall. Sorry if I, if I hurt your finger. No, you're fine. All right, get that thing out of there. Yep, pull it straight off. No, no, pull it straight off. There you go. All right, so before you run away, this is your primary bearing. This is your governor gear, which if you're doing a governor delete, this is the thing that you obliterate and you take out of here, along with the other end of this bar, which we will be doing for building this into a mud mower. If I rotate this thing, we're going to see our balance shaft, which 
everybody gets in a controversy as to whether this is something that you leave in here or not. If you choose to take the balance shaft out, you want to make sure you take the bearings that, co that coincide with it also out of the entire system. So there's the balance shaft there, which we will be removing. But that bearing that is in there, you want to pull if you're going to take your balance shaft out. It can walk itself out and end up in everything else. This is your oil sensor, and this is your cam. All right, John, let's put that over here. Okay. All right, let's go pull the cam out. So when you go to pull this, there's going to be two little pieces that are going to be on it that may or may not drop out. That's normal. It's okay. At this point, you can be mean to it. Just don't drop it on the concrete. Yes, it's going to be sharp. Okay, let's take a look. Hopefully it didn't chip a tooth. I'm going to No, I think you're okay. I, I don't think you ended up chipping a tooth off. Although that's literally exactly what it is we didn't want to do. Oh, it landed square right there on that tooth. But it doesn't look like it chipped it. We'll just make sure to sand it before we put it back together. Okay, so let's wash your hands off and then we'll deal with the rest. Both of the tappets usually drop right straight out, and they ride on these lobes right here. So we've got the two of these. In a perfect world, we would have paid attention as to which one exactly came out of where, but this isn't a pro-grade build. This is just get it done so that we can get the mud mower built. Now, what we're working on now is getting the connecting rod bolts out. So there's a 10 millimeter on both sides. When you go to break them, you can use this in order to gain leverage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he says. Come on, get it done. <coughs> there. Okay, so once you get them broken free, don't use this as leverage because you'll bind it against things. The other note that I wanted to make here is that the piston about halfway down puts everything nice and easy to get to. But the other thing you want to note is this little tailpiece here, the flinger for flinging oil around, is really easy to break off, and you need this. So be careful with it when you take the bottom of the rod off. You done yet? I'm doing any clicking clicks. Well, yeah, because it's all oiled up and loose. You're probably going to have to undo it by hand. To answer John's off-camera question, this can't come out until after the piston connecting rod and the piston are out. Well, technically, actually, it can come out once the lower cap is off of the connecting rod. So that's what you're going to do right now, is down in here, John, this piece here is separate from this piece. So you need to reach in and jiggle this and see if it'll come loose but don't pull ah see your natural instinct is to pull on this and that'll snap you have to go and get the rod to come loose up there easier said than done huh all right i've only managed to cut myself on anything and everything in here so if you rattle it back and forth usually it'll pop loose there okay so there's that. Yep. So now we're going to grab a paper towel and we're going to rotate this until it pushes this up out. Recording. I'm going to do this part as dad, considering I've already gotten a couple of cuts. I don't know what it is about Hondas, but these gears, the cam gears and stuff, are always sharp and stupidly sharp. 
So we're going to rotate it to bring the rod around and bring the piston up like so. And then if we rotate it up and over, then the piston now is floating. And if you can get a thumb on it, you can usually give it a shove and get it out of there. So when you're looking at this, you're going to see a triangle right here for down or an arrow, however you want to word it. And that corresponds to the long side going down here. All right, John, moment of truth. If we did everything correctly, you should be able to grab that paper towel around those gears and give it a yank, and that thing weighs the most other than the flywheel. So make sure you got a good hold on it. I'm drop this. No, don't drop it. I know. Yep, so... Grab one hand, okay, grab as far up onto here as you can with this hand. Okay. Take your other hand and grab onto here and shake it up and down while pulling towards you. And it's an old engine, which means that the seal on the other side is all kinds of gobbled. Come around, show people that we almost screwed up. We almost forgot to go and take that keyway out. And if we had left the keyway in, we potentially could have messed up that in the roller. On this one, the keyway comes in smaller than this. So it usually will pass through, but you're supposed to pull the keyway in case. All right, John, let's try this. You hold that end. I'll smack this end and, huh? Can we switch? No, you can catch. There you no, go. I can't. Ready? Oh, oh, there it goes. I felt it. <clears throat> there you go. Go put it on the table. You have you officially just tore it all down to just the block. <clears throat> well, other than the charging coil, but we're going to leave that because we need the charging coil for lights and charging the mud mower. Ow. There we go. What do you think? How hard was that? Scale of 1 to 10, 1 being easy, 10 being hard. 4. A 4? Okay, so it was relatively easy as long as you had somebody telling you what stuff did and how to take it off there? Actually, a 3, but yeah. Oh, oh, it's a 3 if I give you commentary? Yes. You guess. All right. This thing definitely has a few hours of runtime in it. It's going to end up with the governor delete and getting set up for the mud mower and for plowing my driveway and stuff. We're going to be tearing down this Duramax and we're going to be swapping over parts from the Duramax into the GX Honda in order to see what is actually fully interchangeable and everything because I'm sick of the arguments and listening to it. So... We're just going to see how many different things may or may not swap over. Have a good day.